Hello, my name is Matthias Schmidt. I'd like to welcome you about the today's presentation on the typical taste characteristics of the most important grape varieties in the world. We are going to talk about certain red and also certain white varieties that are important in terms for the international wine business. Um, yeah, first of all, where to find viticulture and where to find those varieties that we are talking about. On the Northern Hemisphere, we can simply say that we find commercial viticulture between the 30s and 50s degree north. Nevertheless, due to climate change in the last years, we are tending to shift northwards so that even in uh, areas like Belgium, the Netherlands, but also Poland, Northern Germany and Scandinavia, we find more and more viticulture um, and wine production there. On the Southern Hemisphere, we find um, viticulture for wine production around the 30s degree south um, in terms of uh, New Zealand and Tasmania, we go even more southwards than that to cooler areas. While talking about a grape variety, we refer to a variety of a vine or grape plant. So-called amplographers speak about uh, a variety or a vine plant. Um, these varieties are characterized by the shape of the leaves, by the specific shape of the bunches, the color, the composition of the grapes and their so-called vegetative status. We will nevertheless in this presentation um, talk about varieties in terms of their sensory characteristics and what specific flavor their wines can have. Starting with this chart here to the right hand side we see in terms of red wine that we can have a huge variation of different wine styles coming from red varieties. Starting with light bodied red wines on the top, uh, where we also have certainly an overlap with some rosé wines. Those wines are generally more fruity, less coined by tannins, and then going down the scale to, uh, yeah, full body uh, style of wine, bolder wines, which are coined more by uh, tannins. We see usually more bitterness, but also in some cases, some more astringency or those wines can handle more of that. Generally speaking, we find um, lighter red wines more commonly from cooler climates, whereas in warmer climates, we generally have more full-bodied red wines. Nevertheless, there are exceptions and there are certain enological measures or strategies to pr produce uh, more full-bodied wines, even in warmer climates. Starting with Cabernet Sauvignon, the most widely planted red variety, um, in total we have something like 340,000 hectares of those variety worldwide. Initially coming from Bordeaux, um, we also find it now in many, many other regions, as mentioned, um, either a single variety or in a blend. Um, typical taste characteristics for that varieties are full-bodied wines, firm, medium acidity, tannins, which are medium. In terms of aroma, we get dark fruit, we get, get bell pepper notes, Crafted or mint eucalyptus characteristics in the nose, usually bright fruit aromas and sweet notes. Um, the color is to be described usually as a deep ruby. Um, it can age quite long. It has, especially in cooler areas, a really, really good aging capacity, like traditionally in Medoc, where those wines can age easily 10 years or more. Some even have a best drinking age, which is 10 or 15 years after the vintage. 
Cabernet Franc is the next variety uh, that we will discover, also coming from Bordeaux. It is nowadays planted on 56,000 hectares worldwide. Um, you get it often uh, in a plant, but it's also suitable as a single varietal wine. Typical case, taste characteristic of it is that it is medium in body, usually dry, medium in acidity. The tannins are also not too pronounced, can be described as being medium. In terms of taste characteristics, we get strawberry, raspberry, but also bell pepper notes, chili pepper, and even crushed gravel notes. In the nose, it's Fruity, bright, with a hint of sweet notes usually, and the aging capacity is not as pronounced or not as long as for Cabernet Sauvignon, but five to ten years in the cellar is usually quite simple or quite easy for those wines. And the color can be described being as a something similar to medium garnet color. The next variety that we are talking about is Merlot. Merlot also coming from the Bordeaux area is nowadays planted worldwide on 266,000 hectares. Um, typical taste characteristics of that red variety are that it is medium in body, usually very dry. Um, medium in acidity as well. It has more softer, easy drinking tannins, a softer finish. In terms of fruits, it can be described in general by red fruits, but also by some herbal flavors like ivory um, and vanilla and chocolate notes while it is aged in uh, wooden barrels. In the nose, we get notes of leather or ripe fruit characteristics. It can age 10 years or more in the cellar. While it is young, we get a deep ruby color and while it is aged, we get a bit more dull brown uh, color characteristic. Quite interesting here to mention is that Merlot, as it is grown worldwide, tends to differ a bit in terms of its climate where it is grown. While it is grown in cool climate, Merlot is usually coined by high tannins, it gets earthy flavors like tobacco or tar, and while grown in very warm, hot climate conditions, it's more forward in terms of fruit, the tannins are less prevalent, and due to very high alcohol contents that are also possible, sometimes a certain sweetness occurs with that variety under that warm conditions. The next variety that we are going to talk about is Syrah, or like you call it in Australia, Shiraz. It is planted worldwide on 190,000 hectares approximately. Typical taste characteristics are that this wine is usually full bodied, also dry. Tannins are medium, moderate. The acidity is also an intermediate, not too high, not too low. In terms of fruit characteristics, we usually get blueberry, plum notes, but also coffee or milk chocolate notes, tobacco, menthol or leather notes. Um, the nose is coined by berry fruits, but also by coffee or even hickory wood. It can age 10 years or more in the cellar as well, so good aging capacity. The color can be described as a medium purple. Now coming to a bit lighter wine style in terms of red wines, Pinot Noir. Worldwide it is planted on 112,000 hectares. It's a typical Burgundy variety. Um, while looking at Pinot Noir as variety, we see a huge variation in terms of plant material. So while looking at typical Pinot Noir as it is coming from Burgundy, we have a typical elegant complex red wine and while going to Champagne uh, where we also use quite often Pinot Noir as um, source for sparkling wine production it is completely different. So Pinot Noir delivers red wines but it delivers also rosé wines even Blot Noir wines and sparkling wine as already mentioned while focusing here on the red wine 
We get typical taste characteristics of wines that are medium bodied, a bit more lighter or delicate than the previous ones. That usually it's dry, not sweet or semi-sweet. The acidity is medium, but it can be also certainly pronounced. It has delicate low tannins. It gets fresh fruit notes like cherry, raspberry, but sometimes even mushroom or hibiscus notes. Some, sometimes certain aroma components are difficult to describe and sometimes explained as a kind of pino spice. In the note, we get fresh fruits, we get spicy notes, and um, a good Pinot Noir can also age quite well on basis on its acidity. In terms of color, it's more light, it goes into a pale ruby color, whereas we have um, rot infection on the crepe material, it turns brown quite early, quite quickly. Pinot Meunier as next variety is also coming from Burgundy. It is planted on more than 15,000 hectares worldwide. Um, it is used in Champagne as a typical variety for sparkling wine production, but also in other parts in France or internationally, we find Pinot Meunier as red wines. It's light in body. It's Ideally bone dry, uh, the acidity is higher than in Pinot Noir usually, um, it is quite low in tannins, it's usually explained by tart cherry, pomegranate notes, uh, you get also something like potting soil, mushroom notes, and in the nose usually sweet fruits, spicy, sometimes even smoky, the color can also be explained by pale ruby color. It can age with a certain acidity also quite well in the cellar. Something more to be worth mentioning, Pinot Meunier, Meunier, the name goes back to the miller, indicating that the leaves are quite white and that goes back to small whitish leaves on top of the leaves. Grenache is the next variety that we are talking about. The typical taste characteristics for Grenache are that it is quite high in body, quite powerful due to high alcohol levels usually. Uh, try the acidity nevertheless is medium, tannins also medium, uh, alcohol medium to more high. Typical mm, characteristics in the nose are red fruit or spices, strawberry, uh, also grilled plum, black plum notes, leather and even dry herbs. It can also age quite well, so 10 years or more in the cellar are possible under good conditions. Um, it is worth mentioning here that it has quite a lot of synonyms internationally. It is planted on 150,000 hectares worldwide. In France it's called Grenache, in Spain Ganacha, in Tuscany even Alicante. Um, in terms of color it can be described by a light red. Now we are coming to the next or the last red variety in our presentation here. Uh, Mouvetre, it's also called Monastrel in, in Spain, um, but also in southern France we find this variety. In general, uh, worldwide we find it on approximately 51,000 hectares. Um, in the nose we get notes of truffle, herby or spicy. Um, it is usually explained as full-bodied wines, usually dry, medium in acidity as well, but the tannins can be quite high. Blackberry notes, black pepper notes, cocoa notes, fresh mushroom, sometimes even, or tree bark. Um, the color is usually quite deep. Deep ruby is a common explanation in terms of color, and it also has a quite good aging capacity. What other red varieties do we have worldwide? Here is just um, a list of some of the most common red varieties that we find. Um, Tempranillo, Carignan, Sangiovese and many many others of them. Um, 
other single variety or as being a plant. In the following part we are going to talk about the major white wines and the major white varieties and how they um, are typically uh, defined in terms of their sensory characteristics. While talking about white wines in terms of sensory characteristics, it's first of all important to note that in general white wines see a bit more acidity or can see a bit more acidity than most red wines. Um, besides the color, it's also the tannin um, perception of white wines that is usually way more mild uh, until none. And furthermore, we see with white wines generally more residual sugar and up to really, um, yeah, specialities, very sweet wines made out of mainly white varieties here. Um, furthermore, important for the aging capacity of white wines, and especially here, due to high acidity, um, many sweet wines also have a really long aging capacity. And it's really interesting also to discover here how they can change in terms of their characteristics over time. So um, it is not just for red wines that we can have 10 years and more in terms of aging potential. Also, some um, white wines show a potential also that long in terms of aging and you always discover more and more interesting um, characteristics due to that and many wines. To start with the first white variety, it's Chardonnay. It's planted of approximately 210,000 hectares worldwide. It's making it, in terms of white variety, the most important, I would say. You find it as a global player all over the wine world and um, it can be used as an, yeah, White wine is still wine, but also in many cases it is used for high-class, high-quality sparkling wines. While talking about white wines, we can say in terms of color, um, it is mainly a deep gold in terms of color. In the nose we get aroma in terms of peach, uh, spring blossom and depending on the decision of the winemaker, is it aged in wine or not, we get oaky notes and further other complex notes from barrel aging. Um, further typical taste characteristics are, in general, the body is medium. Um, when it is very alcoholic, like in the new world, it can be even a bit more than that. Usually it's dry, relatively dry, uh, rare to find uh, Chardonnay with residual sugar. Um, the acidity can be quite long lasting. Um, furthermore, in some cases, while you have a typical Chardonnay like it was produced initially in Chablis, whereas you have um, a barrel aged Chardonnay that went through malolactic fermentation, it's usually quite soft in terms of its acidity. Um, furthermore, you get tastes of yellow apple, uh, star fruit, pineapple notes, and coming from barrel aging here, vanilla, buttery notes, um, going back to diacetyl, which is produced by malolactic fermentation, which is a possibility of um, tailoring a certain wine style based on Chardonnay. The next white variety um, we're talking about is Sauvignon Blanc. You find it planted on around about 123,000 hectares worldwide. Um, initially coming from the Loire, um, it's also spread now quite um, well over the globe. Um, what Thinking about typical Sauvignon Blanc origin, it's on the one hand side the Loire, but also a clearly different style. 
of sovereignty of law is what you can discover from New Zealand or from South Africa. Um, in general, we have a medium yellow color of this wine. Typical taste characteristics are that it is medium in body, usually dry, very dry, um, no sweetness. The acidity can be quite high. And this is now depending on the vinification process um, and a bit viticultural process, how much of greenish notes you leave or do you want to have it a bit more neutral like initially at the Loire or do you want to have it a bit more pronounced uh, going into uh, descriptors like gooseberry, honeydew or also in the nose fresh cut grass, tropical fruit um, or white peach or even passion fruit also a parameter that is um, can be triggered in, in the cellar quite well. Um, so this is a very, very interesting white variety when it is about discovering the fingerprint of enology in terms of um, yeah, style or tailoring the style. So initially coming from the Loire as more neutral, more yeast coined um, white wine and in the new world it was discovered giving really very, very expressive, fruity, uh, greenish white wines. Riesling is to be found on approximately 60,000 hectares worldwide. A bit more than one third of it is grown in Germany. It is a white variety which can age quite long, 10 years and more, especially uh, sweet Rieslings can age easily more than 10 years in the cellar. Um, it's medium in its body. It can be dry, semi-dry or sweet. So you find here the complete range possible with that variety. Um, usually the acidity is high to very high. Um, typical taste Descriptors in the nose are peach, lime, apple, pear. Um, you get also um, in the tastes uh, lime, lemon notes, honey and bee wax are often descriptors that you get for those wines. And depending on the degree of noble rot or botrytis as it is called, we could actually get even more interesting notes of similar or something like orange peel. Um, so this is also a variety that can uh, go quite well in terms of botrytis. And here botrytis, um, it's not just interesting in terms of um, concentrating the grapes and delivering dessert wines. Um, it is influencing also the color. You see here two examples on the left hand side. A uh, typical botrytis free Riesling, which can be described by a pale straw. On the right hand side, we see a deeper yellowish color coming from um, yeah, more concentrated and botrytis infected grape material. Um, furthermore, typical characteristics um, that Riesling can develop over time is a petrol or diesel fuel note. Um, that goes back to an aroma component that is slowly discovered over time. Um, TDN, it's the shortcut for it and um, typically coming after five years, that typical Riesling aged character. In warmer years and under uh, warmer storage conditions, we could also see it coming um, earlier than that. It's a style characteristic. Um, which yeah, divides a bit preferences, either you like it or not. The next variety is Gewürztramina. Gewürztramina is um, a typical musket variety. It's planted mainly in France, but also in Germany, Italy, but you also find it in the New World. Um, as I mentioned, that it's a musket variety, so it's coined by primary aroma mainly, so coming direct from the berry, from the berry skin. 
and therefore in terms of processing and in terms of degree of ripeness there can be huge differences in terms of its varietal characteristic or the aroma intensity. Um, general descriptors in the nose are lychee, a honeysuckle, cardamom, um, Body-wise, it's, it's medium. Usually you get it off dry, but sometimes you also get it as a sweet wine. The acidity is compared to Riesling and to other whites more low. And um, yeah, furthermore, besides lychee and uh, Swedish spices, you get rose notes, grapefruit, honey, ginger, even cinnamon, um, and sometimes smoky notes. It can age more or less good three to five years in the cellar and the color is usually described by a medium golden color. The next white variety is Pinot Gris. Um, Pinot Gris is um, yeah, a variety from Burgundy. It is um, wildly planted over the, over the globe and it is quite famous for um, yeah for one reason as as it is compared to the other whites that we were mentioning so far it's quite neutral so there's nothing disturbing if you're unsure uh, what wine to serve Pinot Gris has the clear advantage there's nothing that disturbs nevertheless um, we get in the nose certain yellow pale uh, apple aroma, melon or apricot notes, but quite light. Um, usually it's, it's light in body, unless you have it very alcoholic, then it can even have a certain bitterness due to the high alcohol. Um, usually try um, comparatively uh, high in acidity, it can be, um, and sometimes we get notes of uh, yeah, Mirabelle, white peach, melon, or even raw almond or crushed gravel. Um, while you age it in a barrel, it also gets clearly oak notes from there. Um, interesting to mention in terms of color, it's usually explained as a medium gold, but depending uh, on the ripeness degree of the berry, where it can turn even into a grayish pinkish color. And while you do a maceration, you also get certain color, slight pink notes from there as possibility. It can age three to five years in the cellar. Müller Thurgau is a variety that goes back to um, breeding in Geisenheim um, from Mr. Müller from Swiss, Switzerland, the Swiss canton Thurgau. Um, you find it then also in the name. Um, it has several synonyms. One of them is Riesling times Silvana, and that leads a bit to a misunderstanding in terms of breeding parents. Modern DNA analysis turned out that it is a breed between Riesling and Madeleine Royale, a table grape. Um, it was the most widely planted white wine variety in Germany, um, but Riesling took over. The same for Müller Thurgau in New Zealand. Before Sauvignon Blanc got big in New Zealand, Müller Thurgau was the most widely planted white variety there as well, but it disappeared nearly completely here. Um, it has a comparatively low aging capacity. The color can be explained as a medium straw. In the notes, you get usually white fruits, peaches, sometimes even musket notes. It's quite light in body. Um, often you get it with a certain residual sugar. The acidity is quite moderate, a bit lower than for Riesling. It's furthermore often coined by peach or rosé or lemon notes. Um, lime and flintstone notes are possible as well. So it's in general an easy drinking white wine.